In this video, I'm going to take folks through getting started as far as the modeling toolkit and also working with the component polygon editor elements that can be used inside of Maya. So a couple of things here before we dive in. First off, if you notice on the right hand side here, I do have my modeling toolkit open. Just as a reminder, if yours is closed accidentally or you cannot find it, check up on the right hand side here and make sure that you have the blue outline around what looks like a little hammer in a box to show hide the modeling toolkit. One other thing that I'm going to do is I am going to stay in perspective view for this tutorial, but one thing I'm going to do is get rid of the grid. We don't really need it for the demonstration here. So what I'm going to do is up here, up on the viewport here, you can see a little button here that it looks like a grid. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and just get rid of that. We don't really need it for this. Now to start off with the components here, we're going to talk about extrude, bevel, add divisions, and bridge. Now, one nice thing about each of the tool sets here is whenever you're not sure, or maybe you can't remember what something does, each one of these, whenever you hover over them, some of them will give you a more option that you can actually go out, it'll open the internet, and you can watch a video on it. So don't worry if you don't remember everything right off the bat here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a cube into my scene. And I'm actually going to just scale it up here just so we can see what I'm doing here. Now, working inside of the environment here, one other thing to talk about is object mode versus working in the component editor mode. By default, whenever you first make an object in your scene, it's going to be in object mode, which means you cannot select the edges, the vertices, or the faces of your polygon. But what you can do is you can scale, rotate, and move it around. One cool thing about the modeling toolkit is it does give you a way that you can go through and select each of the components if you prefer a button style layout. Another thing that it, you can also do is in the scene, you can right click and hold and you'll see that you can actually choose between vertex, edge, and face. One last item here as far as a workflow goes. I've had a lot of students that up on the top here where it says multi-component in the modeling toolkit, you can actually click on this and notice that all three elements become, become active. I can now come in and I can click on each of the individual items here and I can work with them. And I don't have to worry about changing between and clicking through each of the buttons. Now there may be times that all three being active from a multi-component standpoint is fine, but there may be times that you are fine tuning and you need to go in and work with the individual items there. So now that that's out of the way, let's dive into components. The first one that we're going to talk about is extrude. Honestly, extrude is a great starting point for a lot of students. Extrude, you can extrude faces, edges, and vertices. And I'm going to go ahead here and just up on the top, I'm going to switch over to faces. This is probably the one that is the most common you see in a lot of tutorials. And what I'm going to do is select one of the faces on my cube here. Keeping it highlighted, I'm going to come over and click on extrude. Now, a couple of things happen here. Whenever you're working in Maya, first off, you get this sub option window that you can actually click and work through as far as thickness, the translate, divisions, etc. Or if you prefer, a couple of things to point out is you could just come and work with your widget here as far as the direction and the pull of the overall extrude. From a basic standpoint, what I'm going to do here is notice it has the z-axis set for me, so I'm going to click hold and just drag out here. And you can actually see how it changes on the local translate. I could also go a little bit further here and I can click to come in on that center point there and scale if I wanted to. So maybe if I wanted to make it a little bit larger, I can. You can choose the number of divisions on the overall extrusion. 
So maybe you're thinking in the future you're going to need to bevel something or you want to have subdivisions here that maybe you're going to do an additional extrusion. You can add those in here. And once you do that, you can just click away and now your model has those new pieces added in for extrusion. So now if I go ahead here, kind of just pan around, you can see the new additions there using extrusion. So that's your extrusion tool. Really handy tool to have. So the next tool that I want to talk about now is the bevel tool. Now let's say maybe on this other side of the face here. So I beveled this out a little bit and for some reason I say on this front side here I need to bevel. So I'm going to go ahead here and click and then choose my bevel tool. Once again, notice here that I have beveled the face of the object so I can actually come in here. And to go a little bit more in depth here to get you started, whenever you're working with these submenus here, you can actually come in and you can either use as far as the terms here are concerned, you can actually use your text as far as creating the different segments for how smooth you want something to be. You know, another good starter point may be the depth, so you can actually swing it back and forth there. But also too, just so you're aware, you could actually come in here and just type in values if you preferred. I have students using either or. So that's beveling for a face, but however, I want to draw your attention to, maybe I grab, I'll go ahead and shift click these top two edges here. Notice the difference that I can come in now and I can also bevel my edges here. Kind of make them a little bit smoother there. So right now I have this combination a beveling going on. So that's how the bevel tool works. Next up, let's talk about adding divisions to your object. Adding divisions can add a little bit more control where you're not so much relying on the tool that you are utilizing, such as bevel or extrude, to make things like extra faces, but instead you're actually adding the divisions preemptively. So for instance, let's say I select this face here on my cube. I'm going to go under Add Division, and you can see that it's already created one division. So the higher you go, the more faces it can generate. And now I have additional divisions here that I could work with as far as my overall layout is concerned. Notice though, however, Whenever I did those divisions, notice it did not affect any other faces on my shape here. So this is a way that you can kind of get a little bit more detail and a little bit more control dependent on specific areas of your model. Lastly, I want to talk about bridging. Let's say for sake of argument, oh, I delete and I have now a whole in my shape here, in my overall model. Just as a side note, Maya denotes the backside of an object through black. Right now, in later tutorial videos, right now what it has is just a gray material applied to the object, the default material. So I accidentally deleted as far as one of the faces here. So what I want to do is I want to bridge between two of the edges and refill that hole. Now it's going to be a little hard to see here, but I've switched to the edge tool. I've selected one edge and I'm going to shift click to select the other edge. And from there, I'm going to choose to bridge. And you see now that it kind of cleaned back up for me that my little oopsie that I made. And now if I go back to face, just to show you here, you see how I can select it again, like an original face. So those are some of the component tools that can get you started as far as working inside of Maya and working with some 3D models. Honestly, looking at this, I could probably even go a little bit further if I beveled some of the edges maybe. I, you know, I almost feel like I kind of have the start to a little goldfish here.
I could add a little bit more detail as far as going a little bit further with the mesh and the other tools. But for right now, to get started, these tools in and of themselves will give you some great options for getting started and creating basic polygon shapes and models.